Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm TZ Sweezy, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the array and curve modifiers, and you're going to be seeing how modifiers help the modeling process move a lot faster. What is a modifier? Well, a modifier is basically a tool that allows us to change the way an object is displayed or rendered or shaped, but it doesn't actually take place, or, or none of those changes are set in stone until we apply them. So uh, real quick, just to show you one, if you wanna get to your modifiers, it's the wrench icon on your property panel, and then you could add in a modifier and then uh, a subdivision surface. We'll just add one of those in. And so I can increase the subdivisions and make my chain link really smooth, as you can see. But if I go into edit mode, you can still see that these uh, faces are the way that they are. And so none of these changes are actually applied until we hit the apply button, at which point then all of those faces have been increased and now it's super smooth. But we're gonna undo that because it's not about the subdivision service modifier today. We're talking about the array modifier. So there are four sections or four types of modifiers. We have the generate, as you just saw with the subdivision surface, will allow us to add in new geometry as well as to um, increase the geometry or change the way the geometry is created or, or formed. We have the deform type of modifier, which allows us to change the way the mesh or objects look, but it doesn't actually add in any new geometry. We have the simulate modifiers, which work to simulate things like physics or particle systems or you know water fluid, whatever. And then we have the modifier type, which work like the deform type, but on mesh data or vertex data. So those are our types of modifiers. But before we begin talking about the array modifier and the curve modifier, I want to show you what it's going to look like to do what we do with the modifiers by hand. All right, so we have a single chain link, as said by the shape of the object and our outliner. And what I want to do is make a full chain. Now by hand, without any modifiers, this would look a lot like going into edit mode, uh, shift D, duplicating all of the stuff we have, moving it along the X axis, placing it, rotating it along the X axis, and trying to create a decent looking chain by hand. And that's just, you know, a, a good deal of trouble. Because what if you needed, say, 100 links, right? Then you could be here all day trying to get the, um, the correct amount of links together. And that's just too much work, right? And honestly, it's a bit tedious because if you have to go in and remove a link, then you have to go and select all the faces and delete it by hand without removing any of the other links that you want to keep. Since that's by hand and that's a bit tedious, there's a very easy way. Uh, and that is by just using the array modifier. So thankfully, we have modifiers because doing it by hand, just too much work. So we can go to add modifier, which again, wrench icon on the property panel, add modifier, and we'll add in an array modifier. And so right off the bat, you can see that we have two chain links, and that's because the array modifier comes in with a fit type of a fixed count, and the count number is set to two. So if I drop this back down to one, then it's going to only have the one chain link. If I jump this up to say 173, you can see it's created that many chain links for us. I'm not gonna count them. You can trust that Blender actually did what we were supposed to do or making it do. So I'll drop this back down to three. Um, and then let's take a look at some of the other ones. Now we will look at the other fit types, the fit length and fit curve in just a second. But before we do that, um, let's talk about the offsets. So right now by default, it's set to relative offset, which means the size of the object, whatever the percentage of this up, like up to one, right, it will do that. So if we set it to 0.5, you'll notice that the chains now reach from the halfway through the previous chain to halfway through the next chain, because it is at 50, essentially 50% 50 of it on the X axis. Now it's labeled here as X axis. It's just understood that this is the x-axis even though it's just not labeled. You can also offset it on the y-axis by checking this one which is the y-axis over here and the z-axis up or down doesn't matter. Okay so that's the relative offset but it works within the 
actual dimensions of the chain link itself. Now the constant offset, and you can actually have both the constant and the relative offset active at the same time, uh, but I'm just gonna turn it off. And so we'll say that the constant offset, if we set this to one, right, notice that we have three here, but this is actually one and it's not quite halfway. And that's because this is one blender unit on the x-axis will be the offset. So if you increase this to two blender units, then it would be fine there. If we did it to three, it'll move three blender units over. All right, and that's essentially how the constant offset works. It's just uh, the distance in blender units between the objects instead of the distance in the relative size of the object between its next copy. All right, and again, you can work with this offsetting it on the y-axis and the z-axis, whatever. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the relative offset here, and then we're gonna drop this down to 0.6 so that the chain links are sort of working together, and then we're gonna look at some of the other pieces here. Now, there is a merge option, and this merge option will merge vertices that are close to one another within this uh, distance. If I increase this, you can see how it's starting to change the chain links so that instead of them actually uh, being their own separate links now that they are or now they are merging together so that is one thing that you can do um, it'll also allow you to merge the first and last duplicates of the chain link or of any object you're working with on the array modifier uh, and that way you don't have duplicate vertices in place so I'm going to undo the merge because I don't need it to merge at this point um, start and end cap we'll look at in another video but we also want to look at the object offset right now. So the last thing we need to look at before we check out the other fit types is the object offset. So let's take a minute and look at that. All right, so the object offset is a way to apply a transformation to the array modifier that's taken from another object. Now it's a really good practice here to use an empty object. So I'll just drop this in here. Um, and so this is just an empty object here. These are used a lot with rigging and things. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do the object offset off of this empty. And so what I can do now, if I wanted to say, rotate my chain link, I can rotate this, let me look at it from the right. I can rotate this now and it will move the chains and rotate them as they duplicate. Uh, now what's really cool about this is if I increase the count here, you can see that the next ones are just continuously being rotated. And so that's a really neat way to uh, add in some all that, all that extra work without having to do it by hand. All right, so that's basically all of the settings um, that are the default for the array modifier. But let's take a look at the other two fit types and then we'll move on to the curved modifier or how to use the curve modifier in relation to the or in conjunction with the array modifier. So let's go to fit length first. Now what this is going to do is it's going to fit um, the number of duplicates inside a specified length. So if I say you know we do 17 it's given us this many. If you drop this down to say 7 it's giving us four chain links here based on our relative offset. Now, if we decrease our relative offset, you can see how it gives us a ton more change that's going in the negative direction. Uh, but now in the positive direction, you know, it's a ton more change. And as we increase the relative offset, Blender is trying to give us the correct number of chains for the given length that we have specified. All right, and the last one is the fit curve which requires us to have a curve curve object. And so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a curve object here. So under the curve objects, I'll add in, and I'm just going to do a path because it's pretty simple. And what you wanna do when you add this in though, is these objects, uh, as long as they're on the point of origin for the chain link that you're working with, you'll be fine. If they go off that point of origin, weird things can happen. You also, just as a side note, you wanna make sure that your scaling is set to one, 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 because you can see that there's some weird, crazy effects going on here with the chain link. Um, you know, and so it'll, 
it will or the array modifier requires that scale to be just a size one in all directions so real quick i'm going to go to the uh, curve that we added in this NURBS path and I'm just going to move it on the x-axis too so that the very back of our curve here is or the very back of our path is set to the point of origin of the chain link and what's really fun about this now is I can go into edit mode and as I extrude out and change the length Oh, sorry, I guess I didn't apply that yet. So let's go to fit curve, choose the curve, NURBS path. Um, and as I go in here, if I were to extrude out and change the length, it's going to add in these curves. And if I bring it back, um, it's going to shrink things down for us as it fits the path. But what if, what if I wanted it to like come up with me instead of just, or, you know, or go this way? instead of just adding new chains as it's doing here. All right, well, the way that I could do that uh, is by adding in now a curve modifier. So I'll click back on the chain link and I'll go here and I'll add a curve modifier to it. And then I'll just choose the object and I'll choose NURBS path. And now the chain link is following along the uh, path that we have set up. So I, as I go in here to edit mode, I can extrude out and it will continue to follow along that path uh, and create new chains, rotating them as I go. All right, and so none of this is destructive, which means if we go into edit mode on the chain, we still only have this little piece and you'll see that the rest of the chains are here. So here's what can happen if you add modifiers in the wrong order. The effects get applied specifically and so what we have right now is we have the curve modifier above the array modifier and it's no longer following that path for us. But if I move the array modifier back up, it's going to duplicate all of those chain links and then it's going to deform those duplicate chain links along the path that we have uh, created here. All right, so that's just something you wanna work with and the curve modifier just allows you to work with any curve. So if we weren't dealing with a NURBS path, but let's say we were dealing with a circle. So let me just add in here a uh, circle and then go back to the chain link modifier for the, for the curve here and we'll add in a uh, Bezier circle. You can see now that the chains have kind of rat nested themselves. And so I can, sorry, we'll fit the curve to the Bezier circle. And you can see this is our new, our new thing. So we'll go to the NURBS path and then we'll make the curve modifier back to the nervous path, and there we go. There's our nice little chain. All right, so that has been the array and curve modifier. Hopefully, um, this was educational, and you can see how it's applicable. You could also add in, say, another array modifier here. Um, if you needed, say, duplicate chains, so you could then, let's say we want them side by side, so we'll move it one on the y-axis and zero on the x-axis here. So now you've got chains going in the same direction. This might be helpful if you were trying to make a chain for like a drawbridge and you just wanted to make a chain real quick. And that way you've got it done before you apply anything. All right, and then just to get the chain to stay like that, just apply all of your modifiers. And so now when you go into edit mode, you can see that your chains are completely added. But one of the cool things about this is you don't have to apply those modifiers. You can just leave them as unapplied. And then if you're exporting into Unity or whatever, when you go to export, you'll have the option to apply the modifier then instead of uh, while you're working on it. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video, learned something, and you can now include the array modifier and the curve modifiers into your life of 3D modeling. I'm TZ Sweezy, and I'll see you in the next video.